recording. Check your mic one more time. Check, check, check. Cool. <sighs> All right, Shaylee. You're finally here. Recording vocals with Joey Sturgis. How's the process been for you up to this point? It's been a journey, and you, of all people, know. You've been with me since the departure of this journey. Um, about a week prior, I caught a virus, cold flu or whatnot, that you were aware of. Uh, I started feeling weak, you know, all that stuff. And then my throat. Um, so immediately, you know, just to try to avoid any of that uh, compromising this situation, you know, I got, some, got on some antibiotics and some steroids to try to help, you know, quicken the process. And that did. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was the virus didn't allow me to uh, retain water. So I just kept getting more and more dehydrated and I tried to hydrate. Joey was out while we were doing pre-pro and I powered through that. I wasn't feeling good, you know, I was just putting on the happy face to try to get through it and just, you know, to basically lie to myself and be like, I'll get better, better tomorrow, better tomorrow, but it just wasn't happening. And it, and it was the last day Joey was out, you know, we went out to eat and something was really wrong, I knew it. So I dropped him off and the following day, I knew something was uh, horribly wrong. So. That's when I contacted you to help me uh, take me to the hospital because you know I didn't really even know what was going on, other than I don't feel good and I and it, it, I was dehydrated and you know my pre-existing back injury, not having my body uh, hydrated and lubricated my muscles, uh, so my you know it just affected my nerve damage, uh, my pre-existing nerve damage and really uh, made it difficult and scary. I mean my legs were throbbing. I was in probably some of the most severe pain I've been in in, in my life, uh, that, particularly that day. Uh, but, you know, we went to the hospital and got me on an IV uh, to get fluids in me directly because it was just going right through me. And that helped kick me in the right direction. But the day that we flew out, I was still bad off and we didn't really know what was going on. So we went and I think we, we stopped at a CVS or something. and thought like maybe I'm diabetic or something. Maybe, maybe there's something else. So we got a test of that just to make sure. And uh, we did and it was, it was negative. I was fine there, uh, but it was very, it was a crazy situation because I was on the fence of postponing and canceling like wholeheartedly. Like I was terrified that I couldn't do this and I had to travel all day with my already back injury. Cause you guys got to remember, I already have issues that prevent me to do a lot of the normal things people do, like touring, uh, just hanging out with friends, sleeping normal. Like this has been a, a prison of mine for years now. Um, and that just times it by 10. But you know, in my heart, I was like, I, you know, I had a feeling, you know, if I push through, I'll get a little bit better. And slowly but surely I did. And I'm thankful that I made that choice. If I'm being honest, I, I didn't really make that choice for me. I made that, that choice mainly because I was worried about everyone else's plans and flights being canceled as well. So I was like, well, I can't be that guy that cancels. Um, and I'm a trooper, you know, I have, I'm very resilient. I'm just gonna push through, whatever happened, happens. You know, if, if, if I fail and I end up in the hospital again, whatever, at least I tried and I didn't, you know, cop out and stay home because the last thing I would wanna do is cancel and then two days later, I'm like, well, I'm good. And then what, you know? So I pushed through and so far, you know, I'm still dealing with the back injury and standing and singing. You know, I, I didn't have time to rehearse or practice my vocals, which kind of sucks, but I'm me and I've been singing for so long. I was able to, yesterday we tracked two songs and I was able to pull through yeah. and do those two songs, surprisingly. So yeah, it's going pretty decent right now as far as my health. I mean, I don't feel great by any means, but I feel good enough to do what I do. So that's, I'm thankful for that and hopefully, as the next days pulled out, like I'll start feeling better and better. Yeah, awesome. This collaborative effort has been long anticipated both by you and your fans. Why does finally working with Joey resonate so heavily with you? Well, Joey is a super important person in my life, whether he realizes it, knows it or not. But when I first met him, I met him, I think I was about 22 years old. I had just joined of Mice and Men like a week before we went and recorded with them. So everything was new. They're like, you're recording with some guy out in Connersville, Indiana, some nerd. And I'm like, oh, okay. So whatever, I didn't know. So we fly out there, I meet him. He's a lot shyer back then. Uh, but man, once we got to working together, there was something uh, just chemically explosive between him and I, or at least for me, I'm speaking for myself. 
I had worked with you know a few producers in my life, some actually well-known people in my prior band, Covet, uh, but him, on the other hand, it was like, I always had a lot of these ideas, and when I was with Joey and I would explain to him an idea, it was instant he understood what I was talking about and instantly could create it. Yeah. Not just like, yeah, I get what you mean, I'll do it later. No, he's like, check this out, boom, 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 boom. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. So it blew my mind, and one specific situation that he changed my life as a vocalist in this, I don't think I've ever even told him this, but it was when we were, we were tracking When You Can't Sleep at Night. Now, I had just developed this kind of insecure type of whisper singing my falsetto, because I have different registers of my falsetto, but there was this one that I would do and just like, like, like sing like that quiet. So it was like a whisper, and it was, it was my way of singing and writing that nobody could hear me, but I could at least get my melody idea out. I remember, I, you know, I showed him that song as I was just writing it in that time frame or something. And I was like, yeah, and I have this singing, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's gonna work if I sing like He's like, no way, here, I'm gonna crank the preamp and uh, we got you, you can actually do that. And I'm like, really? And it blew my mind. And ever since that day, that voice has written some of the greatest things that I've done since then, you know, some of the greatest ideas and melodies. And I, now I have this, register that used to be this wide and now it's this wide. And that's thanks to him for showing me that it, I could do it. Because a lot of people would be like, nah, that, you know, you're not gonna be able, that's not right, you need to sing a certain way. He was like, you sing whatever way you sing and we're gonna make it work. And that was one of the greatest eye-opening things uh, I could possibly, that could possibly happen to me. But yeah, as far as this, as far as him and I working together, this is a dream come true. And I've been asking him since Day Shell album one, but he had retired at that moment for the first few albums. And it wasn't until Mr. Payne, I remember he emailed me and he was like, dude, please let me do the next Day Shell album. I'm like, well, duh. I've been begging you for freaking eight years, dude. Let's go. And here we are. Heck yeah, man. Well, that kind of brings me to something that you and I talk about a lot. You know, the, today's listening culture, there's been a major tectonic shift about how people listen to music, how people interact with artists, interact with bands. Um, and I know this is something that resonates heavily with you. Given today's listening culture, would you say that this is arguably the most important album to date for Day Show? 100%. I was thinking about that too the other day. Like what, what separates this album from the others, you know? Of course, what do you think of our first two albums, the self-titled and Nexus? I had musicians and lifelong friends and brothers at the time in with me on this. So I, they had a lot of, not that they did a lot of the writing, they did contribute here and there, but they had uh, just opinions and stuff that helped mold it, you know, not in a bad way by any means. It was just like them being there and present saying, you know, maybe, maybe not that. I'm like, okay, of course, yeah, like, let's change it. Uh, you know, when I did Mr. Payne, it was like my first, album that I did on my own. I was and I was newly sober at that time. Everything was unfamiliar. I didn't really know what I was doing. I did a 14 song album, which I shouldn't have done. But at that time, I didn't know if it was gonna be over or not. So I was like, well, I might as well put as many songs on, on this album as I can because this could be my last. I don't know what's gonna happen with me. But after the success of that album and the fans all coming together to help support it, you know, obviously I can't stop there. Coming into this album and since Mr. Payne, I have stepped into recording myself, producing, writing for other musicians. So I've built a new skill set, more professional of what I do. And now I'm, I've honed in on that a lot more coming into this album. Like I, I'm more prepared on this album than I've ever been in my life. And I think it's solely because I've stepped into the production world and mixing and editing world. And also Joey has helped me out so much with his plugins with JST. He sent me like an awesome care package in the beginning of my production phase and it just kickstarted me in the right direction and inspired me in so many ways. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Plus, you know, I got a life, lifetime of, you know, shit I've gone through. And these past few years have been very hard on me emotionally and lots of changes have happened in my, both my private life and public life. And I just feel like, I don't know, you know when you, you just feel something inside of you that you can't explain, but you know this is gonna be the most important and best work you've done? I think that's, this is that pivotal moment for me. I like, to, I like to think, although I may be speaking too soon, I like to think this is the epitome of what Dayshell always is and should have been. And we've, I've finally honed in on everything that I've been trying to create for the past three albums here. It's yeah. finally the definition of what Dayshell is, at least in this version of Dayshell. Yeah. Futures remains to be seen, but right now what everybody's loved, I finally figured out how to do it. Yeah, 
And I imagine that kind of being at this point in time, this season of Deschel and the epitome, like you just said, like having dialed that in, I imagine it's so much more satisfying because you're taking all of that trauma, all of the heartache, all of the heartbreak, pretty much everything that you've gone through your entire life, but looking at it from a sober perspective yes. and putting it all into this album. Yes, like like I said, Mr. Payne was, I was newly sober. This album, I'm familiar with my sobriety. I have a little bit more control over my emotions and perspective of perspective of things, but still, you know, the struggles will always be there, and that's what makes Deschel, Deschel, that's why my music's so emotional and expressive and so up and down. It's because I'm always struggling with, with uh, maintaining uh, clarity with my emotions, you know? Absolutely. Well, Shay, thank you so much for the time. I know you need to get back um, to recording vocals, but before I let you go, um, do you have any final words or thoughts as it relates to this entire process, getting to this point? Anything you'd like to say at all? Well, I couldn't have done it without my friends and my family and my fans, 100%, uh, especially just getting out here. I, I, you know, in a case of emergency, all my family and friends came together to support me and uh, make it happen. You know, I, I can't, can't really describe that feeling, uh, you know, like how um, it's just, uh, just a lot of gratitude. Well, dude, thank you so much for the time. You know, I, I'm, I think it goes without saying we're all excited to see what goes down with this record. Um, I won't keep you much longer. Go ahead and get back to do what you got to do. But thank you so much for the time, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, dude.